Hey everybody, it's time for setting up preferences in the FedNow service. When banks or financial institutions join the FedNow service, they or their service providers have to set up some choices or let's say have some configurations for some settings done. These choices are known as components of participation type. It's really like that in the FedNow service operating procedures. And they decide what a participant can do when they're on the FedNow system. So what are these actual choices? First of all, there's a receive request for payment, also known as an RFP. It's a pain 013 message. Well, what exactly is that? Well, RFPs let financial institutions get payment requests or reply to requests for payments and send, you know, the customer credit transfers as a reply. Well, who sets it up? More like who turns it on? The Federal Reserve Banks do. When a participant joins, if they ask to have the RFP option turned on, they get it turned on or they can turn it on later. Now, can you see it in the FedNow system? Yes, you can see it, but if you want it turned on, you gotta talk to your Federal Reserve Support Center rep to get that happen. Then another setting is the, the maximum, maximum transaction, transaction value. value for a customer credit transfer. So what exactly is this one? It's the highest amount of money a bank or credit union can send in a customer credit transfer. Of course, to receive, you have to be able to receive at the maximum. But you also, when you go to send, can't send above the Fed maximum. You can set a lower limit than you know, the Fed's maximum amount. Please note, you might be able to set, you probably can, set your limits within your software application from your service provider. And you may want to leave the Fed amount at the maximum amount, but it's a great you know, secondary control just in case if you want to have it set there. All depends on how your system and service is going to work. So who sets up the maximum transaction value limit in the FedNow service? You do. You as the participant, or maybe your service provider does. Can you change the maximum transaction value limit? Yes, you can. That one is editable. But there's a default limit, which is a bit less than the maximum allowed. So if you want to raise it, you can to that maximum. Now, if participants want, they can set a different amount, but it must be a whole positive number in US dollars and more than $1. Our next setting is the reserved receiver FI response time. What? Yeah, let's go into this one in a little bit more detail. Participants or their providers can actually decide and adjust how long they take to reply to certain payment messages. This is a reserved response to provide a receiving participant with time to indicate whether or not they intend to accept or reject, possibly accept without posting, an incoming credit transfer. This is basically the amount of time that the receiving participant wants to reserve to verify they, they actually have the account. Maybe run optional, optional screening like for fraud or even OFAC, optional, okay? Now, the FedNow service allows a receiving participant to configure a response time frame up to a maximum of five seconds. So you can figure that based on what you and your service provider need for you to be able to check the transaction coming in before you respond. Next, we have the maximum transaction value limit for LMTs. This is just like the customer credit limit, but it's for liquidity management transfers. So participants or service providers, they can make adjustments for this. It's again, like the customer credit transfers. So let's move on because we also have the receive account debit credit notifications. This one is for correspondents. They can choose to get updates when accounts are debited or credited. And like all the others, this one can be changed too. There are a couple other settings that I think we all need to be aware of, and that is the participant negative list. Well, what is this? Well, this setting lets participants block transactions either coming from or going to specific account and routing number combinations. It's like a blacklist for accounts that they don't like and they don't trust. Now, who can use the participant negative list? Any participant that sends or receives customer credit transfers. How do you set up this negative list? Well, participants or their service providers can edit this after getting the go ahead from the Federal Reserve Banks. Yeah, you're gonna have to talk to the Federal Reserve Banks to get this one started, but then you, you put things on the list. Now, if a participant, like I said, wants to use this list, they have to call the FRB Services Support Center to get it turned on and activated, but then you configure it. Another important setting, daily reports. We need to know what's going on, right? What is it for? Well, at the end of each day, Participants can get 
two types of reports about their account activities. One's kind of a broad overview. That's the account activity totals report. And the other gives a little bit more detail on what's happening, the account activity details report. Well, who can use this setting, adjust this setting? All participants within a participant profile on the FedNow service can access these reports because they're there whether you send and receive or just receive. How do you set it up? Well, participants or service providers, they choose these reports how they want. I mean, it's done when you go to onboard, it's configured, but you can configure it later too. Now, by default, you only get the account activity totals report by default at the end of the day, but they can change this to get whenever you want. If you are a settlement only or correspondent, just overseeing respondents, you will get a special combined report that summarizes each participant or respondent that you are in charge of. Again, reports are configurable, and a lot of the reports are also what we call on demand. So if it's not automatically sent at the cycle day, don't worry, you can request it and have it right then and there. Make this even a little bit more simpler. Participants using the service have settings that they get a tweak. You can create a negative list for certain accounts to help preventing fraud and scams. <laughs> yeah, so you basically negative list, you ain't getting in. You can configure daily reports, account activity totals report and the account activity details report. When and how are they you know, sent? Are they ever automatically or do you just get them on demand? You get to configure that stuff. You can reserve time for verifying incoming transactions, but only up to five seconds. Two in one, you can set maximum limits for credit transfers and LMTs. And you can configure the receiving of notifications, especially as a correspondent. And finally, are you gonna work with those requests for payments? When joining FedNow, participants or their service providers set up these choices about payments and the limits and the reports too. Some of these are set up by the Federal Reserve Banks. Well, others are chosen by the participant or the setup is done based on what the participant has chosen or it is done in working with the service provider. Many can be viewed or changed in the FedNow system at a later time if needed. But it's a good idea, it's a great idea actually, to discuss the settings with your service provider and your FedNow onboarding team, onboarding manager, to decide what configurations will work best for you. Because I know one configuration that works for me, and that's this class being over. Class dismissed.